There's this new guy at work, and I'll call him Eric. Eric is weird, and he is about 36 and has the weirdest sense of humor we've ever seen. He doesn't cause problems, though, so we tolerate him, and that's for the most part. He'll crack off some odd, off color jokes every now and then, but we let him know. He looks weird. Like, I can't really pinpoint my finger on to why, but something about his face is just unsettling. He was wearing tinted lenses, so I couldn't really make out his eye color either. Personal choice, perhaps. My friend Emily works in the cubicle right next to me, and if anything odd really happens at work, she always is the first person to let me know. It was a couple weeks after it happened. Some guy at work didn't check in for a while, and I overheard my boss speaking to Emily about it. He said that it was probably the flu and that he just was too sick to actually pick the phone up, which... I. I can believe since last time I had the flu I was bed bound for almost two weeks and what I could only describe as a combination of semi-coma and fever dreams. We figured to wait it out for a couple of days. Our boss says he'll give it a couple more days and if the guy didn't phone in he'd try to contact his family to see if anything happened. Meanwhile, Eric's behavior started getting just weird. I'd went downstairs to get to the vending machine, and Eric was there too. As I was getting my food, Eric just stood there staring at me. I noticed he wasn't moving at all, and he wasn't wearing his glasses either. Immediately, the hairs on my arms started to stand up. I noticed the whites of his eyes weren't white. They were this odd aura of sky blue and gray. Even without his glasses being there, his face was just so uncanny. The best way I could describe it would be an unnatural, symmetrical, and doll-like, but it was worse than that. He then slowly started to smile, and after a few seconds, he was smiling ear to ear. Before he smiled, his mouth looked a little too small for his face, but now it was unnaturally wide. There was a deafening silence, so I said, uh, can I help you? And that's when Eric slowly began to walk up the stairs. He was walking up those stairs as if he'd never even seen them before. But that's not all. As he walked up those stairs, there was a god-awful cracking and snapping sound. Like a branch snapping. Each time the sound could be heard, he stumbled for a split second. It was almost like walking up the stairs was hurting him. I didn't mention this to my boss because earlier that morning, the ventilation system stopped working and was dripping a foul-smelling liquid. Our boss said that he would get it fixed the next day. One of the vent hole covers was broken off. I could have sworn that I had passed that vent hole a few days ago and it was fine. Probably a rat got in there and just got stuck, my boss says. Eric didn't turn up for work the next day. I told Emily about Eric. She laughed and then said, Thank God. Guy sounds like a weirdo. Work was fine and I had largely forgotten about Eric by this time. When we turned up for work the next morning, our boss said the vents are fine and aren't dripping liquid anymore. Probably just like a malfunction that sorted itself out maybe, he said. I went to Eric's cubicle to ask him why he didn't turn up for work yesterday. When I said hi, before asking him, he jumped. Then he began looking around as if he was confused. I was sick, he said. I noticed a jar of some sort, which looked like it had meat in it. It almost looked like pulled pork, but it was in a jar. The jar was labeled with the word Nagalic on it. I said, hey, is, uh, is that your lunch? He paused for a couple of seconds before flatly just saying, yes. My girlfriend recently got fired from her job, so while she was trying to get employed at another place, I asked my boss if I could work overtime to help her. He agreed to it, and instead of finishing at 5 p.m., I end up working about 9 to 10. It was the first night of overtime that happened. Everyone else had left, including my boss. My office was dark, 
only lit up by the light of my computer. There was dim, scattering lights here and there. But overall, it was pretty dark. I was finishing up my work when I began to hear banging sounds coming from above. It sounded like something blunt knocking on metal. I tried to ignore it, but the bangs just kept getting louder, and I went to investigate where it was coming from. I was in the hallway, and I could see the vent. The banging was coming from almost directly above. Then, I noticed the banging sounds were moving. They were moving towards the end of the hallway, towards the vent hall. The banging stopped. The only substantial lighting was coming from my phone flashlight. I was trying to get the video recording on my phone. Just as I was about to take the video, I saw a man's head and face peering out of the hole from my phone camera. I was frozen in fear. It was him. It was Eric. It was just glaring at me with a blank expression, followed by the same damn ear-to-ear -ear smile. My fear turned into amusement as I realized he must have been stuck in the vent. I laughed at him. Okay, buddy, you scared me, but now you're stuck, and I'm going to have to try to find somebody to help you out. Eric froze still for a second again. There was no way he would be able to fit through what looked like to be only about an 8x8. Eight eight. I don't think even children could fit in there. That's when Eric thrusted his arms forward. I heard those god-awful snapping and crackling again. His shoulders looked completely broken as he made his way out of the tiny little vent. Then, his head emerged. He was smiling with his teeth this time. But his teeth didn't look right. They looked jagged and razor sharp. In my shock, I saw him fully emerge from the vent with his shoulders, arms, and hands looking completely twisted and broken. He started dancing while trying to adjust his mangled joints. Then, he looked completely uninjured. But his eyes were so dilated, they looked black. At this point, he lunged at me, and I screamed. I don't know what happened after that. The next thing I remember is being with a bunch of cops telling them a guy at work tried to attack me. They tried to tell me the guy was probably just some homeless dude who got into the building at night, probably just to sleep and didn't believe what I told them. Since I didn't have any injuries, they didn't take me too seriously. The next morning, I caught up my boss and told him that I'll be finding another place to work since my girlfriend is moving states. That was a lie, of course. I met Emily at the store and asked her about Eric. She told me that he hadn't shown back up to work again. She said that his office was completely empty. I don't care what anyone else believes. I don't know what Eric was, but whatever he was, that look that he had when he saw me, no human could make that look. Sometimes when it's late at night and I catch a glimpse of the street through my bedroom window, for a second I feel like I see him. It makes me wonder why we as a species evolved to experience the uncanny valley. What was it that looked so human, yet scared us so much? I had been homeless for two years when I found the Shady Acre apartment complex. Before that I had been sleeping under roadways and behind dumpsters, which were some of the lowest points in my life. Having found the mostly completed apartments, being abandoned before they were officially completed, was like hitting the jackpot for someone like me. Tucked away in a cleared lot nestled against the woods on the slower part of town. The Shady Acres were a complex for newer families and lower income individuals, but somehow, it never found itself finally being completed. The walls were not painted and the flooring was not yet installed, but aside from the minor features, the place was practically livable. Of course, electric wasn't working alongside the water and plumbing, but as the saying goes, beggars can't be choosers. I peeked my head inside as I entered the first floor. 
tools, materials, and odds and ends still laid strewn about, as if someone was going to come back to finish the job, or at least clean up the mess, but it appeared that no one ever did. I grabbed a sizable pipe laying on the ground, just in case. Homeless people, if startled, can and will turn violent very quickly. I did a brief inspection of the main floor, peeking my head inside of doorways to confirm that I was alone in this substantially sized building, but sure enough, I couldn't find anyone else. As I continued to inspect the main floor, I found a stairway. A metal door once stood in the way, but now laid on the ground. It was clear that someone had damaged it with some type of tool in order to keep it open. I went to the stairway and looked inside. The natural light provided by the sun, aided by the many windows, could only spill over so much. Inside was a set of stairs going both upwards, but also downwards below. I didn't have a flashlight, but what little natural sun entered the stairway was just enough to give me the courage to explore upwards. I went up the metal stairs quietly, so as to not alarm anyone else to my presence here. The second floor was nearly identical to the first. I walked down the halls gripping the pipe, ready to defend myself from any unknown attackers. Again, much like the first floor, I didn't see anyone. However, I did find troubling signs of people having lived here at one point. I saw an old mattress littered with trash and old cigarettes, clothes tossed in a pile in the corner of the room. Several dark stains covered the floor, and one splattered on the wall next to the head of the mattress. My heart sank. It was more than likely something sinister had been committed here. I was going to turn to leave, but alongside the disheartening evidence of someone being here, I found a flashlight and an old pistol. I took both and checked the gun to see that it still had three bullets remaining in the cylinders. I was going to leave, but seeing how now that I had a gun and a flashlight, this changes things. The flashlight worked perfectly, emitting a strong blue LED light on the stained wall when I clicked it on. I still kept the pipe with me as a backup, but the pistol was now firmly gripped in my right hand. The second floor had bits and pieces of trash here and there, but nothing else as concerning as what I saw in that one room. I entered the stairway with my flashlight guiding me. Unlike the first two floors, the third floor had an actual door standing at the entrance. Lucky for me, the handle turned slowly when I tried it, and granted me access. A quick inspection of the door revealed a marvelous find. This door could be locked from the inside. If this floor was clear, this would be a great setup. I could lock the door and prevent any vagrants much like myself coming up here and killing me in my sleep. All I would need to do is verify that the floor was clear, and I'd be all set. The third floor had varied greatly from the first two. No bits of drywall on the floor, or discarded nails laying haphazardly. There still wasn't any electricity, but nothing my new flashlight couldn't handle. The floor was unfinished, but oddly clean, as if it was getting prepped for carpet or new flooring before this place shut down. I cleared each room slowly, making sure to check every closet and cupboard before finally letting my guard down. I went back to the stairway and locked the door, preventing anyone else from coming up. I picked a room facing the parking lot, that way I could look out and see if anyone was coming. I spent the rest of the day in my newfound home. The flashlight and gun were an amazing find, but that unsettling sight of blood-stained floor and walls were somewhat concerning. Maybe it was something else. Perhaps someone spilled something there and it just looked bad, I thought to myself, trying to not freak myself out as much. The thought also crept into my mind about how I yet to inspect the basement and what horrors lurked down there. For being homeless, I was fairly paranoid. I made myself a game plan for tomorrow that I would go out and find cheap furniture and food to fill my barebone apartment. It would take several trips, but well worth the effort. Nighttime and boredom eventually found me. I sat in the corner of the room trying to get comfortable and let sleep carry me away into tomorrow, but it was difficult. Sure enough, I managed to fall asleep, but staying asleep was another story. I woke up in the middle of the night I didn't have anything to check the time, but it was several hours before the sun would be rising. I got up feeling the urge to go to the bathroom. 
this complex didn't have running water, so I'd have to go outside to relieve myself. I grabbed the gun and the flashlight and walked over to the stairway and unlocked the door. I went down the two flights of stairs and walked out to the back to go to the bathroom. The back of the complex was as neglected as the complex itself. Tall weeds filled the field that stretched out to the dark trees. Moonlight was scarce, and a cool chill breezed over me as I went to the bathroom. I glanced at the complex as I did my business. Anxiety had yet to find me as I was still sleepy. I could hear cars off in the distance from the nearby highway, but no animal life could be heard. It was probably too cold for them, I thought as I pulled my pants up and made my way inside. I entered the hollow shell of the first floor. Stealth was not my main concern, seeing that sleep was my only goal. I entered the stairway, ready to ascend back up to my room of safety, when I stopped. For the briefest of moments, I could have sworn I heard what sounded like mumbling down below into the basement. My flashlight was on, but I didn't dare shine it down into the basement. In fact, a moment of curiosity washed over me as I turned my flashlight off and listened in the stairway. I gripped the gun as I stepped over to the stairs that led downwards. My suspicions were confirmed as I felt my way down a step or two to hear more clearly the rambling of someone down there. I paused for a moment, unsure of what to do. Whoever was down there sounded as if they were speaking and no one else was responding. Perhaps a mentally ill person took shelter down there. I walked back up the stairs silently as the soft mumblings of whoever was down there slowly faded beneath the stairs. I was fairly fit and mentally strong, so having an altercation with anyone would be more likely in my favor. I made it to the third floor and the sound was no longer existent. It was clear that the distance between us had enough cushion to drown out the sound from either of us, which was relieving. I made sure to lock the door to the stairway before heading back to my room. Although the realization I wasn't alone in this building was brief and honestly quite harmless, it made me find sleep all the more difficult. I don't know if I slept much that night, but I woke up feeling very tired. I got up and glanced out the window to see the complex parking lot empty and the sun beaming over the distant trees. I unlocked the stairway door and went down the stairs and outside. I spent the day in town getting things ready for my new place. The local thrift store had a cheap air mattress that I purchased, but it didn't come with a pump. I loaded up other essentials like huge gallon sized jugs of water and food that would be easy to make or didn't require power. After making a trip or two back to the empty complex, my room was decent enough for me to not have to worry about it for a week or so. The only thing I wasn't able to work out was the bathroom situation. That would require me to go down the sets of stairs and out back facing the woods. I was going to go into the basement later that day, but got caught up doing other things, and by the time I was available, the sun had set. This wouldn't affect the actual lighting of the basement, obviously, but I didn't want to face whatever was down there and come up to a pitch black night. Besides, whoever was down there didn't seem aware of me or my setup, and that was enough comfort for me to leave that problem for another day. I made sure to use the bathroom around back before going back up to my room. I didn't want to have to make the bathroom hike in the middle of the night again. While I was using the restroom, I peered out into the woods several hundred yards away. I wasn't sure how long I'd be able to keep up the abandoned apartment situation, so I briefly considered checking out the woods as a backup if I were to be found out. Again, that would be another task I would save for daylight. The woods seemed just as terrifying as the dark basement below. I went back inside, flashlight in hand. As I approached the stairwell, I noticed that on the ground, dark streaks of a mysterious liquid leading down the stairs. The stains mixed with the unfinished floor looked ominous. It was hard to tell exactly what it was, but I didn't like what I was seeing. I turned off my light as I entered the stairway, as to not alert who was below. I made sure to be quiet, but my pace was probably quicker than what it should have been. I opened the third floor and locked it behind me. I did a quick inspection of the third floor as a safety precaution, but 
everything looked how I left it. I was tired from all the walking, mainly having to carry all my stuff around and setting up my room took all my energy. I laid on my air mattress and closed my eyes, trying not to think about anything as sleep began to grab hold of my consciousness when a faint noise jarred me awake. It was subtle, but my mind being on high alert was able to detect movement down below. Normally, I would not have been able to hear what was rummaging down beneath, but since the complex didn't have windows to insulate the noise, I could faintly hear the sound of someone walking around. The shuffling wasn't terribly loud, but whatever it was, was clearly working its way up the complex. What concerned me wasn't the noise itself, but rather how things sounded. There was a hint of stealth in the movements, like whoever it was didn't want to be detected. I followed the sounds beneath me as I laid in darkness. I lost track of where they had went when they were over near the stairwell. I sat up on my mattress and looked over in the direction of the stairs. Did I lock the door to the stairs? I thought. I had been so busy that day that it was very likely that I had forgotten. I got up slowly doing my best to keep my sound low, and my hurry I only brought my flashlight to guide me through the darkness of the halls. I quickly made it to the doorway and tugged on the handle. I did remember. I breathed a sigh of relief and turned my light off. I sat by the door, my nerves slowly getting worked up. I need to stop overthinking, I whispered as I sat in silence after spending 15 minutes trying to locate the sound beneath me. I was ready to get up and head back to my bed when a jostling of the door handle startled me. Someone was outside the door. A brief rustling on the handle shocked my anxiety as I sat in darkness. I could hear someone talking to themselves, but the handle had stopped shaking. Whoever was on the other side had stopped their attempt to gain entry, but still stood outside the door. I stared at it petrified of what would happen if the door lock no longer held. Would it be another person, like me, seeking refuge and wanting to spend the night with a roof over their head? Or was it something else? The person on the other side of the door left the door almost immediately, but still stayed within the complex. Fear gripped me to the door, not allowing me to move. It was clear that this building had another uninvited guest, but that wouldn't last. As I was debating on how to proceed, I heard another sound, but this one didn't come from the other side of the door, but beneath me. The piercing sound of a shriek filled the complex. Whoever had the misfortune of finding themselves on the lower levels began to shuffle around. They tried to get to the first floor, but I could hear a struggle then more screaming coming from the stairway. The sound of commotion erupted, Screams of pain and terror etched up the stairway, but not for long. The screams quickly died, and the sound of something being dragged away slowly faded down into the basement below. I couldn't be sure, but it sounded as if I just heard a murder take place. I sat by the stairway all night, eyes wide. I couldn't bring myself down enough to enjoy the luxury of sleep. When the sun finally rose, I found the courage to get up and head to my room. I didn't go outside that day, despite having the urgent need of using the bathroom. I ended up just using an empty room and designated that as my bathroom area until I figured out how to get out of this place. I had enough food and water to last me a couple of days, so I had time to figure out what I wanted to do. During the day, sleep finally overcame me, and I drifted to a realm of peace, but that wouldn't last. I woke up later in the day. The sun was completely smothered behind rain clouds, and loud rumblings of thunder rolled in the distance. I could hear a few droplets hit the roof and the windowsill, a prelude of what was to come. The complex was much darker now. My flashlight was needed for just about anything. The day was only going to get darker, so I had to decide. Stay another night and hope that I can evade notice for ten or so more hours or sneak my way out of here. I grabbed the pistol and decided to try my luck. I packed up as much stuff as I could carry in one take and headed for the stairs. 
I made my way over to the door and unlocked it, my light beaming into the thick darkness below. I made sure to check the close was clear before leaving my sanctuary. I slowly descended the stairs, doing my best to navigate the metal steps while also keeping my noise down. I slowly completed the first flight of steps and nothing seemed out of place. On the second floor, my fears had been confirmed. I could see drag marks leading to the stairs with stains accompanying it. I wanted to check out the second floor more, but my nerves wouldn't allow it. The drag marks continued down the steps, leaving thick stains of blood and bits and pieces of flesh. This wasn't just a killing. This was a mutilation. Whoever had done this was disturbed, and they were the last person I wanted to encounter in this dark stairway. I needed to leave. The rain had already began to come down now. I would get soaked the second I'd step foot outside, but I had to do it. I was frustrated by this new development, since I would not be able to hear as well if something was heading towards my direction. I worked my way down to the first floor, but halfway down, my light reached something at the bottom of the stairs that stopped me cold in my tracks. Standing in the corner of the stairway next to the exit stood an absolutely horrid creature. The creature stood hunched facing the corner. My light only caught the lower half of the figure before I turned it off, but it was enough for me to piece what I thought the creature looked like together. The brief moment of horror revealed something blocking my exit. Had it not been standing, I would have thought it was a rotting corpse. Flesh peeled from what limbs I could see and bone appeared to be jetting out of the lower spine. I didn't get to see the rest of it, and I'm kinda glad I didn't. I held my breath as my heart began to race. I was immersed in darkness with whatever this thing was a dozen or so feet away from me. Rain and thunder continued outside, now thankfully concealing my sound. I couldn't see anything, but what little I could hear, it didn't sound like it had moved. I stood petrified on the stairs, knowing fully well I wasn't able to make it out of here this way, at least in one piece. In moments like this, you really don't think clearly. You can only think of survival and nothing else. I had never seen anything like this before. I wasn't sure what kind of gun I had, or if it would even affect this creature in any meaningful way, but I wasn't going to test it now. I began to backstep up the stairs awkwardly. My hands were full, and my heavy pack made the unnatural backpedaling even more difficult. I went for another step back when my shoe didn't clear the step, and I fell backwards. Out of reaction, I dropped the gun and my flashlight to brace myself, reaching out for non-existent handrails to catch my fall. The thud of the heavy flashlight on the metal stairs clambered loudly as it fell down the stairs, echoing in the stairwell. I gasped. A shock of anxiety and dread flooded my system. Without a doubt, I had gained the attention of whatever lurked just beneath me. I dropped my backpack to lighten my load and felt around for the gun. Shrieks filled the complex as an odd twist of events, it would appear that I had startled whatever was down there. I could hear shuffling beneath me, its attention focused briefly on the flashlight that came to a stop, buying me precious time to find my only weapon to defend myself. I felt around, my hands petting the ground, still feeling the wet stains of drag marks from earlier. I was so focused on finding the gun, I hadn't noticed the creature was no longer interested in the flashlight and had begun ascending the stairs. Finally, I felt something solid and gripped it tightly. It took me a few moments to orient myself with the weapon, but before I could, I was tackled on the ground. Immediately I felt sharp pain in my side as I was now being attacked. I could feel claws beginning to slash out my outer coat and heavy pressure on my chest. I pressed the barrel in the direction I heard the shrieking and felt something solid. I pulled the trigger three times and my hand knocked back from the power. The gun burst briefly illuminated the area. The flashes of images haunted my vision. I could briefly see in those very few moments what appeared to be a decomposing demon. It was so quick and I was in so much pain that I wasn't able to process everything right then. The pressure relieved off my chest as it seemed I had injured this grotesque attacker. 
However, I still heard movement squirming around on the ground, and loud horrifying screams. I left the empty gun in my backpack with all my stuff and ran past the sounds of shuffling. I went to the stairs, and went as quickly as I could without falling in the dark. The pain in my side seemed to disappear, as adrenaline began to pump in my system. I made it to the first floor, and I kicked the flashlight that I had dropped earlier. I picked it up and turned it on, and ran out of there. I left the complex with whatever it was still screaming inside. The warm rain slowly drenching me the further I dragged away. The screams never did stop. They just muffled the further I went off into the dark rainy night. When I was a good distance away, a part of me wanted to glance back and shine the light on the complex. Perhaps my demonic attacker had gotten better and was now pursuing me. But not looking back would be a risk that I was willing to take. Thanks for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. I know my story was a little bit short and I do apologize, but that's all I could really do in the meantime, and um, I wanted to make sure that he, um, he got the stage for a decent amount. But I do want to say thank you for joining us today. It really does mean a lot, and especially since I've actually been watching your content for a while now, it actually uh, is pretty cool to uh, be able to have you on. And I know you're going to watch this, and I really hope that you do listen to the outro. But, <laughs> but um, if you like this and you would like to see more of these, like the um, featuring other people and stuff like that, make sure to let me know. Make sure to like, comment, and if you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. I've got a lot of content, a lot more coming, so just know that. Also, make sure to check out the links to the description, which his channel link will be in the description as well along with my Twitter or X or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, Instagram and anything else, really. And my Gmail if you want to submit a story. But, with that being said, stay safe, stay scary, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>